Hey Rufus, we're gonna get a little scientific today. What's your favorite element on the periodic table? Yeah, that, that's not a real thing, Rufus. That's what Hugh Jackman is made of or whatever. Hugh Jackman isn't real. Yeah, that's, that's not real either, Rufus. That's what the Pink Panther is made out of or whatever. In that show, Wakanda Vision, that's, that's not real. Okay, that's the made-up element on Pandora in Andrew Lloyd Webber's flop musical Space Cats. Actually, though, it's worth pointing out that Andrew Lloyd Webber didn't invent that word. People have been using the generic term unobtainium since the 1950s to refer to any hypothetical substance that's so rare to the point of non-existence. So half credit for this one, but try again. That's a Simpsons joke. We can buy real periodic tables instead of these promotional ones from Oscar Mayer. Now who can tell me the atomic weight of balonium? Ooh, delicious! Correct. I would also accept snacktacular. Here, just take this copy of the table and pick some for us to talk about, you mini. Okay, that's a real one. Blackboard. Gold comes from Latin. Aurum means gold. Silver comes from Latin. Argentum means silver. Copper also comes from Latin. Cuprium ais meant money from Cyprus. Copper was mined in Cyprus in the ancient world. Next. Iron comes from Latin. Ferrum means iron. Lead comes from Latin. Plumbum means lead. Tin comes from Latin. Stagnum referred to an alloy of silver and lead, and later tin. A scribal error led to the later spelling of stanum. Next. Potassium comes from Latin, sort of. The word potassium itself comes from the word potash, with the metallic suffix ium on the end of it. Collium, where the K comes from, is a late Latin word for potash, but collium itself derives from Arabic, just as the related word alkali. Of course not. Let's find some Greek ones. Just start at the beginning. Hydrogen. Greek. Hudor means water, and the gen suffix you see on a lot of the elements means producing, like in genesis or generation. Hydrogen is called water producing because when you expose it to oxygen, you get water. Bonus fact, the German word for hydrogen is Wasserstoff, literally water stuff. Next. Helium, Greek, from Helios, the sun. This element was first discovered when scientists used spectroscopy to analyze the light coming from the sun. That's right, I did say that. Rufus, you just came perilously close to demonstrating learning. Congratulations. And you've lost it. Anyway, the reason that helium has the eum suffix is that scientists inferred the existence of the element from the sun's spectrum reading and just assumed that it would be a metal. When helium was finally created experimentally on Earth, it turned out to be a gas, but by then, nobody could be bothered to change the word. So, it's the only eum element on the table that isn't a solid metal at room temperature and pressure. Next. Lithium, Greek. Lithos means stone or rock. Lithium was discovered in a solid mineral sample, so it's got rock in its name. Mercury, Greek. The element symbol, anyway. Mercury is actually a Roman god, the equivalent of the Greek god Hermes. Anyway, Mercury has the symbol HG because of its Greek name, which was a combination of hudor, water, and argyros, silver. This is still reflected in Mercury's colloquial name, Quicksilver. Okay, give me one more. Oxygen. Yeah, that's a weird looking word. I already mentioned the gen suffix, if you were paying attention earlier. Well, as a reminder, it means producing or generating. The oxy part is Greek. Oxus means, well, quite a lot of things actually, but in general it means sharp in both positive and negative ways about many things. That probably doesn't help to explain very much, so let me elaborate. Back in the 18th century, scientists thought there was this element called phlogiston, Greek for burned up, that made stuff combustible. If you can light something on fire, it was thought, it's because the substance contains phlogiston. And when you burn the substance, it releases its phlogiston into the air, where it gets absorbed by plants. This is why plants are flammable, and the air generally is not. A couple different researchers eventually discovered that this theory wasn't quite right. One of them was the Frenchman named Antoine Lavoisier, who was the first person to figure out how combustion actually works, namely that air contains an element required for it. He named that element oxygen, which to him meant acid producing. The Greek adjective oxus can mean bitter or acidic when referring to taste. 
He called it this because he believed that oxygen was the basis for the creation of acids, which turned out not to be true, but the name stuck. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. Which was your favorite periodic table etymology today, Rufus? Uh-huh. Hey, I wonder how much phlogiston you've got in you. There you go, Rufus. Got rid of all your pesky phlogiston. Hopefully a houseplant will soak it up. See you next time.